In the beginning, I don't like this badminton because this is my father's game. My favorite is soccer, and even I represent the school. So he pushed me, persuade me. So he put one dollar there. If you win with my brother, hey, you take this dollar. Thanks to a persistent and passionate father, Malaysian badminton witnessed the rise of the first of the five Siddiq brothers. Misbun Siddiq became a famous figure, synonymous with the country's successful badminton era of the 80s. Badminton Unlimited took our cameras to Malaysia and sat down with the man himself as he talked animatedly about a sport that became part of his DNA. I was very cheeky, I was very naughty. I always get punished because I dare to challenge him. But then he know how to, uh, how to corner me into, into badminton, whereby from there, from there I start to play for school and I start to play for district and I start to champion uh, Selangor. Born in Bunting, an agricultural town in Selangor, Misbun, under the guidance of his father, would become Malaysia's leading men's single shuttler. The once mischievous boy not only became a six-time national badminton champion, he also stormed into the international scene and captivated the global audience with his deceptive plays and big smashes. When I start to train, I always think of, of uh, challenging the opponent. I don't care. So my training, even, even when I was uh, when I start training, I came into the national squad when I was 18 years old. I really came into the Thomas Cup team. In 1978, I was 18 years old. My vision, I have vision. My vision is only I want to be the best player in the world. At 21, the precocious young man won his first international tournament at the 1981 German Open, becoming only the second Malaysian player to do so after the legendary Eddie Chung in 1957. Misbun was also known as the giant killer, with the likes of Indonesia's Lim Sui King, the best attacking player of his time, falling victim to the Selangor-born player. So did Denmark's 1982 All-England champion Morten Frost. And they were not the only ones. I beat Prakas Podukon after he win All-England. Uh, after two weeks All-England, I beat him. I made, beat this... Um, a uh, few of the good, good player, top players, even I beat Hanjan, even I beat uh, this uh, uh, Luan Jin. It's because I like to challenge them. Whatever, I, I like to challenge them. I explore myself. Uh, how am I going to uh, beat them? How, how am I going to challenge them? That's why it, the result comes. Misbun might not be as decorated as his peers, but the 1981 and 83 National Sportsman of the Year was one of the most controversial and exciting shuttlers at that time. Besides being dubbed as a giant slayer, Misbun Siddiq was also well known for his maverick style on court. To him, his unorthodox character reflected his ambition. So that's what they call me uh, rebellious, they felt, uh, they felt uh, eccentric. They, uh, because why? This is something that, uh, because in the beginning, now, now, I tell, now I tell you why I put that Mohican, uh, Mohican hairstyle, uh, why I put that blonde on the, on the head. I want to be the best player in the world. So that's why I put it there. Nobody knows. So that's why it's not in the leg. Uh, so I put in the head there. So I only think if I see on the mirror, this is you, Miss Bond, uh, you must get that number one. So that's why it, it comes to this eccentric. People, people sometimes don't like my character. Because I purposely make this kind of character rather than Miss Bond. I show you champion, Miss Bond. So that means when I champion, Benci, I, I don't like you, but I like to see you play. Okay? I don't like you the way you are, but I like to see you play. After more than 10 years of captivating the badminton world at the highest level, Miss Bond decided to hang up his racket in 1990. Coaching stints soon came next for the 86 All England runner up. He helped guide Malaysia to their fifth Thomas Cup victory in 1992, ending a 25-year wait for the coveted men's crown. But it was the emergence of a certain Lee Chong Wei in the early 2000s that drew the enigmatic Ms. Bun back into the limelight. So I told him that Chong Wei, you want to use Ferrari? First time when I see him, you ask him, so you want to use Ferrari? You crazy, because I want to use Ferrari. No, they're very expensive car. I ask you, you want to use Ferrari or not? So he said, of course I want. Okay, if you want, I want two things from you. You give me your time and you give me your energy. So time. When I said 6 o'clock training, 5.30, you must be ready. 
So energy mean tomorrow you have to smash 500 times, or per session 500 times. So that mean you better sleep tonight. Then so he follow. He trusted. He trusted what I told him. He also a very hard working player. Uh, so and he's quite a very intelligent player. Uh, and he's also a very cheeky player. So that chickenness outside. So I I told him if you are very cheeky, you put in the game. Then if you put in the game, this chickenness, you can be very champ and you can become champion. On the first day of training, he had a chat with the whole team, but he took me aside on the second day and asked me what my goal was. I told him I wanted to become a champion and be Malaysia's number one men singles player. He said, I can do that, and told me to give him time to groom me and trust his training methods. And as long as I followed his instructions, I would succeed. I owe my success to him, and I feel very grateful to him. He has contributed a lot to my success, and I will never forget him. Uh, Misbun was with Lee till he left the national coaching team in 2010, but the former player had never stopped coaching. As one of the founders of Nusa Masuri Badminton Club, Misbun continues to use his experience and expertise to guide the next generation of shuttlers. Together with his brothers Rahman and Jalani Siddiq, he travels around the country conducting badminton talent camps. Uh, because when before my father passed away, Miss Boon, when you are already at the top and you retire, please go down, uh, down and help this student. Give back to them. So that's why I come. Miss Boon Sidek, offbeat maybe, rebellious probably during his playing days, but his energy and passion for the racket sport has never diminished. <laughs> <laughs>